Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of White Pod. My name is Harshit and I'm the director of business alliances at White Labs. We're a digital agency specializing in SaaS and e-commerce SEO. And I've got Vinod with me today. He's the head of marketing at Apex Networks. They are an enterprise networking innovator specializing in secure access uh, service edge and SD WAN solutions. A big welcome to you, Vinod. I'm so happy to have you with me today. Hey Harshit, thank you so much for having me here. Brilliant, man. Now, before we dive into Apex Networks, can you please let the viewers know a little bit about you and your professional journey so far? Absolutely. I started off my journey as a pre-sales guy. That was a long time ago, almost a decade ago, or maybe not so long ago, if you ask me, and moved up my way uh, through the uh, structure into marketing, handling various aspects of marketing to begin with SEO, paid ads, and then social media marketing, email automation, so on and so forth. And uh, currently I'm now heading marketing at Apex Networks. Brilliant. Okay. Now let's talk about Apex Networks. Can you please tell our view viewers a little bit about the company and its main focus areas? Absolutely. Apex is an AI-based enterprise networking uh, solution provider. Right. So what we do is we accelerate applications, provide you with a seamless, secure and scalable network for your enterprise applications. Okay. And uh, we do so with our patented AI based technology, which works on acceleration. And we also have a global point of presence, which are more than 600 scattered across the globe. And we ensure that your business traffic is seamless and always superior compared to what you get elsewhere, be it compared to regular internet or MPLS. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, let's talk a bit more about some of the marketing channels. Now, I, I'm going to be biased and talk to you about SEO first. Uh, how exactly SEO is playing a critical role in increasing your online visibility and how within your organization, how do you optimize your content to rank higher on the SERP and attract the right target audience for you? Absolutely. SEO is uh, too important, right? Because in the world of uh, B2B advertising or marketing, paid arts are uh, too expensive and the budgets are too short, right? The best ROI is always from Google search. And you know what they say, right? Uh, Google is the next Gartner or it's the first Gartner. Before people even talk to Gartner or Forrester or anyone else for that matter, they do a quick Google search. And if you're not there in the first page, then they'll probably miss you, right? So it has always been an important channel for all the enterprises that I've worked. Uh -huh. And my approach to SEO has always been with start with the keyword research, right? A thorough keyword research, your competitive analysis, where your competitors are advertising, I know, sorry, where your advertisers are ranking better, where you're not, where are the gaps, uh, how good is your content from a reader's perspective? Uh, go through Google Analytics, understand your time spent on page. Your technical SEO is also extremely important for you to provide a seamless experience. So all in all, SEO has always been top of the priority list for everyone across the organization. And it's not just me, right? Because people understand the value of SEO now compared to how it was a long time ago, wherein people were just writing content without thinking about either the search engines or, for example, end users. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, uh, even the content writing has streamlined. It is more SEO and user focused because from when I remember back in the days, technical articles used to be filled with jargons where end users would not understand and it would be heavy with images, all tags, and all that, the drill, right? So, so it was not user-friendly, nor SEO-friendly. Now things have changed. It is very simple. It covers the basics. It covers multiple topics. Now, back in the days, people used to write just one standalone topic, and uh, that's about it. Nowadays, people write umbrella content. What I mean by umbrella content is, let's say if I'm talking about apples, I also write about red and green apples. I also talk about fruits. I also talk about other fruits. Also talk about the proteins and uh, everything else that you get out of it. So it's a little more holistic. And that is where I see a positive change happening. And that is how I approach SEO in yeah, every organization. 
you actually very correctly mentioned that building authority in the niche is important and that is where the concept of umbrella and you know, of that clustering basically comes into picture and i think after the eat update that google made they made, made it more evident people have observed it in past that if you cover one topic and make your expertise into that niche you basically reap good results but after that update it was like quite clear that this is the way to go so yeah makes sense now because you are catering to global audience i would love to know how do you tailor your marketing campaigns to resonate with such diverse audience across different regions and industries obviously the same message does not resonate to everyone right because i'm a fitness enthusiast for me something else matters i'm a foodie for me something else matters right it's the same for b to b also the same message does not resonate to everyone especially for each industry whenever we have any of the documents created internal documents or customer facing documents we always ensure that it talks to a particular industry so we always take care of industry specific challenges when we talk about b case studies or white papers or anything else for that matter one more important aspect that we always try to cover is localization uh -huh. because globally we have customers across various geographies which is about 1500 odd customers and they are all from various parts of the globe and not everyone would like to read english content so we understood that well in advance and as much as possible we try to localize the content so these these are two things that we have always prioritized okay and i would love of to understand is... the prioritization process from your end as well on the basis of geography or on the basis of the industry how do you take care of the prioritization it's a lot of back and forth because we are, we as marketing and sales work in a closed loop uh -huh. because uh, whenever we want to shift gears and penetrate a newer geography right our priorities change let's say if we want to expand it would mean we want to explore another industry vertical then our priorities change so based on this based on where we see a, a sweet spot or a low hanging fruit that is where we work extensively on let's say for example we see if you look at it every industry it goes through its uh, technological change its phases right few are in the consolidation era few are in the infrastructure era few are in the application era now as digital transformation penetrates each of these industries uh, their need for technologies like what we are currently offering from apex becomes even more important for them and that is where we identify okay these are the industries who are actively looking for a solution because of whatever reason and these are the content pieces that we want to create for us to educate the market about our solution so that is how our priorities align okay and do you also look into any specific set of analytics or data set to come up with a decision is there anything on that front as well helping you take care of this prioritization process yes we talk to multiple analysts okay. who are a source of truth and they help us understand where the market or the industry is moving towards right. so they act as a beacon of light for us all right all right all right now i would love to understand because the concept of ai based acceleration technology is quite innovative so how do you integrate these technical sophistication into your marketing message uh, to make it like a general joe like me could basically understand and comprehend what your business is like and what you're offering how do you do that if you had asked me the same question 10 years ago it would have been extremely difficult for me to explain to you what exactly we do right uh, thankfully today because of chat gpt mm -hmm. everyone understands what ai means so a huge uh, amount of credit goes to them and a lot of other ai companies who are doing this it becomes easier for other uh, ai based companies and marketers to explain their story yeah so market is already aware a lot of people are aware of what ai does and how it benefits so it becomes uh, very simple and easy for us and if you're asking about what exactly we do now think of internet right okay. 
it is cluttered it is crowded and it is chaotic now for enterprises it means loss of business if they rely on internet to use internet for their enterprise applications to eliminate that challenge enterprises move towards mpls which means a dedicated line it's your own private highway only you ride on it no one else comes again it is very expensive it's not feasible it takes a lot of time to deploy and all that later on appliances came into the picture wherein i give you a box at one end another box at another end it will optimize your applications and think of it as compression i'm sending a zip file okay of course the speed will remain the same because nothing can traverse faster than speed of light but the amount of data that i'm sending is much lesser so it will take lesser time now boxes are old they can't be upgraded with the cloud era today everyone uses zoom for that matter office 365 and a lot of other applications these are all hosted on cloud and it's not really scalable it requires uh, software patches hardware appliances offline can't really handle all of that okay. so eventually enterprises move towards a uh, cloud infrastructure wherein even with uh, remote software updates enterprises could still reap the benefits mm-hmm. now uh, even with that it is too expensive to use your mpls now even though i increase the pipe size if the amount of water that is flowing is not really increasing then what good is the pipe oh. and if it is not taking the best path from your overhead tank to your tap then what is the point right that is where ai comes comes into the picture it makes sure from if you compare an overhead tank it will easily reach your taps oh. whereas the internet it is lot more complicated how do your packets know which route to take which path to select what kind of algorithms will work to reduce the packet size and all that that is where ai comes into the picture it is something which is very robust and it learns on its own so it makes the entire process much more sophisticated and efficient exactly and that's a very i think there couldn't be a easier way to explain such complicated things so kudos to you man uh, i i would love to know any specific examples of a successful marketing campaign or initiatives that have you know significantly contributed to your growth or even market recognition i understand you know uh, you've been in the company for uh, since last four, four to five months now but yeah, i mean you can feel free to you know pick any of the past campaign as well and just share uh, that success story with us please absolutely there are many to choose from from my past life su right our su campaign was a phenomenal hit because i remember when we were trying to rank for that particular keyword a cluster of those keywords it was a hot topic back in the days and the cost per click on google ads if i remember it correctly it was 38 dollars oh quite competitive right? yeah extremely competitive extremely expensive and i used to eat up a lot of our marketing budget we ranked for that particular keyword in about 6 uh, to 8 months we got on the first page and for the keyword that we really wanted to be on top we got there around the same time so that was an extremely interesting campaign there are a lot of others wherein we ran a campaign for reviews through customer advocacy oh. and that gave us really nice reviews and a good number of them because getting a good review is one thing getting many good reviews it's a different feeling altogether for a marketer right okay. so that was another campaign that was really successful so the way we did that was through gamification through an advocacy platform so and was there any reward for the customer what yeah please tell us about that so basically there was a leaderboard it was basically gamified so there was a leaderboard uh-huh. people would get x number of reward points for doing x number of things like for example if they were to uh, share company content so they would get like uh, 10 or 20 points if they were to uh, t- testimonial they would get uh, 30 40 points if it was a video interview uh, 50 60 points 
and so on and so forth. So the entire process was gamified. So basically they would get X number of points for X activities that they would do. And uh, once they reach, uh, you know, a threshold, uh, there would be uh, some kind of reward for that. I would love to know because you mentioned customer reviews and testimonials. They're definitely like the most powerful tool out there. I would love to know how do you leverage these two things in your current organization? And is there any positive impact that you see in your branding efforts and the reputation of the company online? Absolutely. Reviews play a very important role for any organization, be it small or large, right? Mm -hmm. Because when enterprises see that their competitors trust you or people in their fraternity, someone with the same designation, title, or can't they work with you, it builds a lot of trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the easiest way to gain trust, I would say. And also the most difficult thing is to get a testimonial. <laughs> so gamification always helps. If not good, they are always a game changer. Uh, they, they become best friends, not just for the sake of reviews or good business, but in general, a good CSM is always someone who is very good with the customer. They build personal relationships. And of course, a review, getting a review out of a customer doesn't become so difficult with the help of uh, not just marketing, with the help of good CSMs. So these two teams always work hand in hand for these things. Makes sense. All right. Let's talk about social media. What all channels are you leveraging within social to promote the company and any specific strategies that have been working really well when it comes to that? Absolutely. For B2B, I think 90% of the enterprises rely on LinkedIn. Yeah. Also, the rest of the 10% is Twitter and Facebook and uh, YouTube. I've seen very few enterprises explore Instagram. But uh -huh. again, that is something that I haven't done personally. I have always relied on LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter because uh, this is where we wanted to uh, put the effort because Instagram is mainly images and whatnot and we didn't have the, the bandwidth required. But these three have always been on top. LinkedIn takes up the lion's share. And the strategies that have worked here, uh, I would talk mainly about LinkedIn here. One is LinkedIn events. That has worked uh, tremendously, especially for webinars and so on. I've seen... Uh, uh, very good number of registrations crossing at least 300 or so driven organically and all 30 or 40 percent at least registrations turned up into the live webinar right and that has worked good also along with that carousels on linkedin memes in fact they have yeah. also worked very good for me in the past yeah i would love to know because again content is the touch point of any marketing initiative that you do. So how do you create and what exactly is your content creation process looks like? And any specific activity that you're doing with respect to your content that is also help, helping you with your customer retention and those areas as well. Let's keep them separate. Let's talk about lead generation first and then maybe we can move to the your customer retention bit. For lead generation, again, my bread and butter is keyword research, AMS, all those things play the most important role. So the content creation process looks like this. Keywords we are not lacking for, the, we take out the Holy Bible, which is the keyword research Excel. You bring that out, you see which keyword clusters you are uh, currently not ranking. Pick which one has the highest number of average monthly searches, go after those with uh, a decent number of searches, not extremely high, but not too low also, because keep in mind that you are uh, putting a lot of time and effort into creating a piece of content. And if two less people are searching for it, uh, it, it's probably not worthwhile. You want to catch a bigger fish always, right? And that is every marketer's goal. Go with something which is decent and the content around it. Optimize that content and promote it extensively on all the social platforms. And if need be, also try out paid ads, especially LinkedIn sponsored content to drive awareness and traffic to that particular piece of content. 
Yeah. And that that should move the needle within a few days. If not in a couple of weeks, you should definitely see the results. And keep a close eye on the keyword tracking, see what is moving, what is not. And sooner or later, your traffic will pick up, your keyword ranking will pick up. That is when you need to pack it aside and create cluster content around it. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your interlinking is top notch. Uh, see if uh, backlinking or uh, soliciting for a backlink makes sense because it is very time consuming and you might not get the best results. So backlink, if you have the time and resources, if not leave it, uh, it is fine. Uh, it is good to have, but uh, there's a lot of other things that can move the needle uh, if you spend the same amount of time and energy. Anything that you have done in past to gain more backlinks? Any strategy that really worked for you? I haven't spent a lot of time. Usually, we have approached those people uh, who ask for a backlink, right? We tell them, uh, this was mainly with partners and stuff. Hey, they come to us. Hey, you have mentioned us. You haven't backlinked us, right? Uh, hey, we are more than happy to add a link, but you can also add us as a solution provider and uh, provide us that backlink. Uh, so that was a low-hanging fruit for us and that has worked. But other than that, haven't really extensively gone after backlinking. Gotcha. Wherever we have seen mentions, but no backlinks, maybe reached out to them, but not more than that. What tool do you use for checking out unlinked mentions? Use all the tools because we used to use two tools mostly. One is SEMrush. The other one was an experimental tool that, not Moz, uh, there was one more tool. It was a vendor who had, it was a software company, I don't remember the name. Okay. Um, they were new in the market and they were doing something with AI. So we were also using their tools. But SEMrush has always been our uh, go-to tool for all things SEO, mostly. Yeah, I, I understand like SEMrush anyways, because you're doing extensive keyword research and it does the job brilliantly with regards to that. Plus, I think for backlinks anyways, people trust Ahrefs better than SEMrush. Yeah. So that is the case. But yeah, SEMrush does the job pretty brilliantly. Plus they are a listed company. So more resources, more development, more new features coming out every now and then. So yeah, I understand. And if you, if I just think out loud here, from the time that I've started using that tool, which was a long time ago, to what I see they provide now, and from a product perspective, they have done amazing. They did multiple features, uh, though I don't like their pricing a lot. <laughs> but, uh, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. They, they have expanded. Started with SEO. Now they are doing social. Like there are tons of modules and uh, you like need the on content module. One. Yeah. Also have a PR module and all that. So yep. they are adding a lot of functionalities that are good for a marketer. Yeah. Their their social tool is also there, but it's not really on par with what we have in the market, but baby steps, right? So they're definitely on the right path. Yeah. All right, Vinod. Uh, I think we're coming to an end and let's do a quick rapid fire. Are you ready for that? Sure. Fire away. Okay. okay. If given a superpower, what will you choose? Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Talk to animals. Okay. If you could travel back in time, what period would you go to? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Okay. Yeah. When the dinosaurs walked the earth. All right. That's a pretty dangerous time, man. <laughs> okay. Any funny nicknames your parents or friends or even work colleagues used to call you? Are you saying that out loud? <laughs> it's not safe for work. <laughs> yeah, it's not safe for work. <laughs> All right. How many hours of sleep do you need? Six, at least. Okay. And coming to our very last question, what's your what's your hidden talent? I can do pottery. Oh, interesting. All right, Vinod, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, info about the company, your past experiences with us. I really appreciate your time here with me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Harshit. I enjoyed my conversation with you.